Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today we're doing the video that I've been talking about doing for a while. You're gonna build a get home bag with me. Now, this is not a 72 hour bag. This is not a bug out kit. This is not a full on survival in the wild kit. This is a pretty minimal bag that you can just grab and go. Has a few essential tools and gear. I kind of combo this bag with a, kind of a hiking bag as well. So I can keep it in the car. I could transfer it very easily. Just grab this lightweight bag from, from my car, maybe throw it in Ashley's car if she's gonna drive that day or throw it in one of my other cars and just kind of have a little bit of gear with me at all times. Again, I use this exact same setup to take on a hike. So you can basically watch this video and I'll give you the tools and the link and the info to build this exact bag or give you some inspiration to kind of build or modify your own kit that you have. So we're gonna take this inside and China just go through and build this bag. All right, here we are in the old dungeon filming studio room. I'm rolling over something back here, a cable on the ground. We're super professional. So this is the bulk of the stuff that's going in this bag over here, some kind of substitutes. I'm gonna try and talk about all this stuff as I'm actually physically loading it into the pack. So to get things started, I'm using Vertex Long Walks packs. Uh, these are like their lightweight backpacks, relatively new. They've been out for a few months now. This is the 28 liter. All of this stuff would fit into the much thinner and smaller uh, 19 liter, but conceptually, philosophically, I like to leave extra room in my bags, especially bags I'm gonna be using. So my get home bag doubles as a hiking bag. So pretty much all this stuff is worthwhile in a hiking pack, just like it is a get home bag because they're basically the same thing. A get home bag, I made a whole video on get home bag theory. I will link it up here if you're interested in that. But the idea is your get home bag you're using to hike home from wherever you may be stranded. So virtually 100% crossover between a hiking bag and a get home bag, in my opinion, anyway. So again, I'm not really gonna be talking about the concepts of the get home bag. Click that link up there if you're interested more in that. So, but I mention that because a lot of times I'll have an extra layer or two or I'll be out with Ashley or we'll have some stuff or we'll have the dogs. Maybe we'll grab some Subway and go eat some lunch on the way. I like having quite a bit of extra room in the bag. So this won't completely fill this bag up. I'll have plenty of extra space in this bag intentionally whereas this stuff would certainly fill the smaller one up more. Not all the way, but it would fill it up more. So real quick, this bag, it comes in three colors. I do have a coupon code, uh, Vertex. I'm developing kind of new products with them and stuff. They're, they're partners of mine. I guess you could say they're partners of mine. But this bag is loaded up with uh, Tactigami. So I'll kind of show that as I'm loading it in here. But I have a few pieces of this Velcro-backed pouches, basically, that can you can kind of configure it however you want. And that's basically to give this bag that doesn't have a whole lot of interior admin organization to kind of keep things minimalistic and lightweight. But I do like kind of, I'm gonna separate some of this stuff off into, into pouches. You'll see as I load it in here. I have a code, vertex.com, last line saves 15% or more, sometimes 25, sometimes 30% off of the whole site. So you can use that when you check out. So. Let's kind of just go through the stuff and I'll just, as I'm kind of talking about it, why I have it, what you know might be good substitutes for it, I'll just kind of load it into the bag as we go. This bag, I like it. It does have two big water bottle pockets which will fit a Nalgene super comfortably uh, and other water bottles as well. And yeah, it has two of those and then has this kind of stretchy outer portion here which is a great place. I'm almost, like I said earlier, always bring like an extra shell or jacket or whatever. It's a perfect place to kind of stuff that into there. Uh, and then a couple pockets, which we'll get into. So in the main pocket, I have two small kind of these dump pouch things and one large that kind of runs most of the height of the bag on this side. I just thought it was kind of an interesting layout. We'll see, 
we'll see if it all comes together. I kind of test fit some of this stuff, but I didn't put it all in. So we'll just, you'll see as I go. Top Ramen, super cheap, super easy, uh, relatively lightweight and a decent amount of cal 370 calories, salt to uh, replenish your electrolytes and whatnot. You know, not the healthiest option, but if you saw my, one of my most, maybe my most recent Weekender Lander, I like as a kid and still as an adult, like cr crunch this up and sprinkle it back in and just eat it raw and I love it. It's delicious. It's like a, it's like chips kind of. Super salty though. I usually don't put the whole packet in. Or you can make a fire, heat up some water and eat it, you know, kind of traditional style. But easy, kind of relatively high calorie for the weight snack and that'll fit in here. I love snacks. Snacks obviously great for survival, great for uh, your mood. These are new millennium energy bars. They're like a very, very dense pound cake is how I like to describe them. There's a few different colors. Apricot is this one and they're, they're dense. 400 calories in this bar, long shelf life. When it's cold, they are quite hard to eat. It's like, God, when they're warmer, it's a little, but you know, you, it works out and I really, I really enjoy eating them. It, snacks or whatever, you can have trail mix, that kind of stuff. This is a Costco fig bar. So we'll just put snacks there. I actually have room for more snacks and you know, depending on where we go, I may add more to this little pouch, but basically up top snack pouch, always be snacking. That's what I always say, the A, B, S is. So food obviously uh, important and you'll, you'll know, you'll survive for a while without food, but, but why, what's the point? Let's put some medical here. This is the Dark Angel. I forget which, they have a bunch of different size kits. I have some for comparison, ouch pouch. They got some kind of smaller, more trauma centric gear. This one is covers a lot of bases. We got a compression bandage in here. We got various size butterflies, various size bandages, uh, extra sunscreen lotion, which is actually what I forgot. I usually put like a little thing of sunscreen lotion in my hiking bag just in case. And then some gauze, miscellaneous bandages, a tourniquet, some gloves, a space blanket, it has um, quick clot and then some like vent bandages, chest seal type stuff. Probably don't need the chest seals out on a hike, but pretty much everything else here is very relevant to, to hiking or, or getting home. So kind of a, you know, not necessarily a trauma centric kit, but a relatively small lightweight kit that can handle some trauma, obviously with, with the compression bandages, the tourniquet, the quick clot, things of that nature. That is just gonna go in the bottom of the main pocket. It's hard to tell, but it fits like right below the other small pouch, kind of fills that, fills that little void up nicely. Another very important emergency kit, uh, if you have a baby, is this. This is from Tactical Baby Gear. It's called the Ebok Emergency Blowout Kit. Contains a diaper, eight cleansing wipes, changing pad, a distraction card, and a trash bag. I actually need to up, this is only a size two. We're up into the threes or fours now. Cooper's a, Cooper's a growing boy, but kind of an emergency thing. Granted, I will usually have extra stuff, but just in case I just totally spaced it and we have Cooper and we left the diaper bag back in the, whatever, emergency blowout kit. Very nice to have. I'm just gonna tuck that in the bottom as well. I forgot to mention it. A lot of times I will build out my own little uh, medical kits. These are not trauma focused centric kits. They just, it's kind of like a boo-boo kit, but you can do these very cheap. I just build out like 10 at a time. I actually grab this stuff here. So I buy it in bulk. This is a hundred pack of antiseptic wipes. This is a, uh, you know, 50, pa 50 pack of ibuprofen. And I just have miscellaneous stuff, some triple bit antibiotic ointment, some butterfly uh, enclosures, some steris strips, some regular bandages, some diphenhydramine, uh, some anti nausea medication. This weighs next to nothing, 
is relatively cheap, again, when you buy in bulk and make a bunch of little, little things, easy to restock if you need to use one out on a trail. So this actually, this kit's got a little zipper pouch in the back here, perfect to actually shove my little homemade kind of add-on medical kit fits right in the back of that medical. So I kind of have all of my medical put together. I will link, I might've said it already, I'm gonna link to all this stuff down below so it's easy for you uh, to find here. So also paracord. So this is about 35 or 40 feet. I just kind of stretched it out in my garage, stretched it out, I, I unspooled it. I always recommend this, just get a thousand foot spool, get a couple thousand foot. If you're a prepper especially, get a few thousand foot spools of paracord for the end of the world. Uh, I use it all the time. This is probably two thirds used up now. Uh, much cheaper than buying a bunch of 100 foot hanks. And 100 foot's a little overkill for a bag like this, probably 20, fit, 20 foot would be sufficient. Paracord's great, multitude of uses. If you don't know anything about paracord, it's a stranded cord, so it's five or seven layers. I believe this is five uh, individual strings inside of basically a sleeve. That kind of gives it the strength. but. If you don't need the strength, but you need more length for some reason or another, you can actually basically pull out each individual strand so you could turn 20 feet, for instance, into 50 feet, well, plus the sleeve, so you could, you could turn it into, not 50, two times five, 10, 120 feet. You could turn 20 feet into 120 feet of cordage, basically, if you really needed to. So paracord, Always good, you know, a shoelace breaks, you need to tie something up, you need to make a bear bag or whatever. Good to have. This is an SOL uh, emergency bivy. This is one of the bigger ones. This is actually a two person bivy. And this one is the one that is orange on one side and reflective on the other side. Now, uh, emergency blankets have a multitude of uses. You can kind of use them as a poncho. You can kind of use them to help mitigate shock and, and bitter cold. You can also use them for signaling. So I like this one. It's extra big. Usually I don't really, I'm not really into hiking. Ashley's into hiking. So if I'm out hiking, it's probably with Ashley. So two person, one in here for, for the both of us, plus we, we're gonna usually have Cooper and probably have the dogs as well. So it's a little bit bigger, uh, the size of it, obviously, because it's a two person, but still fits in here nicely and has multi-use. So I like things that are, again, uh, multi-use items. I'm gonna fit that, that fits perfectly down into the bottom of this kind of large side pocket here. I'll put the paracord in that same pocket. And then we have cleansing wipes. These are go on the go. You could use wet ones. You could, there's a bunch of different kinds of these like 20 pack, 15, this is a 15, 15 cloth bag in here. I like these ones because they're biodegradable. So if you need to do an emergency nature dump and you're not really equipped to pack it out, Bury this six inches under the ground nicely and it will eventually decompose. I believe, I'm 99% sure, I actually inquired with this company to ask if these were biodegradable. And they, don't quote me for it, but they told me that they are. I'll put those in the same pouch over here. And then we have an emergency water filter. I like these ones, I'm not gonna undo it, but these are the Sawyers. Saw, saw, Sawyers. These are nice because it's, I'll, I'll undo it real quick. It's a little rubber band, kind of keeps it, keeps it together here. But what we have is another water bottle. That's why I like it, an extra water bottle here uh, to carry more water. Always good to be able to, if you find a stream and you don't know when you're gonna get water again, get as much water as you can. So you fill this up, you screw the filter on top of it, and then you squeeze. You can squeeze directly into your mouth or you could fill another bottle with it refill this with water, fill another bottle, whatever, and then just take this and then just drink out of it. So that is kind of nice because it folds up really compact and then rubber bands all together in this little basically water bottle and filter unit. That will also fit into this long pouch over here. So we're getting pretty close to filling up that long skinny pouch over here. We got quite a few items remaining. Let's go through them. I usually keep cash and then an old 
concealed carry permit. So an expired concealed carry permit, or this one's actually just from when I moved and I needed to switch counties, just to have a form of identification in case I'm getting home and there's like a weird roadblock or whatever, and they're maybe only letting people that live up there through. This doesn't actually have my current address, so it wouldn't help out too much with that. But it kind of lets them know, hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a good guy, I'm a law-abiding citizen. And then cash is just always good to have on you. So some cat, maybe you're out on a trail and you're just like, God, that guy's got a Snickers bar. I'll pay 20 bucks for that Snickers bar, cash. So cash is always good to have. I'll just put this in the, the bottom pouch here. Uh, then, I like mechanics gloves. You hear me talk about them all the time. Lightweight, relatively cheap, protect your hands. Uh, now, I'm not into always, like, you know, I don't work out with gloves or anything like that. Like, it's good to build up some, some calluses. But at the same time, if you're doing something that you can, can tear up your hands, it's good to wear gloves because if you rip up your hands doing something, then you're kind of worthless with that hand. So I always like to wear gloves when I find it necessary, and I always like to keep them with me in case I'm you know, doing something that requires, you know, that gloves would help. Also provides a tiny bit of warmth. These aren't winter gloves or anything, but they'll, they'll provide a little more wa warmth than your, your bare hands. Extra pair of socks always come in, come in handy. These are Vertex Merino wool socks. And then just having an extra beanie. If you wanna be really cool, you can get one of my LLOD fully 100% made in the US out of US material beanies. I sell these on my site. Or if you just got a free beanie from some company that you're never gonna wear, hey, throw that extra beanie in your get home bag for an emergency. I'll usually throw this stuff in the beanie or a balaclava. Now, balaclavas are nice to always have on hand. It, it, you, it's always worthwhile to be able to protect your identity in some scenario or add a ton of warmth, especially if the wind is whipping, if you find yourself in a blizzard or something like that where you're just going to get massive uh, burns on your face. Balaclava is good. You know, you can pull the mouth part down and then you just kind of have a, a really warm beanie also kind of keeps your neck warm, acts somewhat like a scarf. So really good for the winter months. We'll just wrap all the socks, gloves, balaclava together, and we'll tuck that into the bottom of the bag as well. Okay, so here's a few more items. This is kind of a little fire starter bag. We got some wet tinder in here. We got some waterproof matches. And I got two mini Bix. So multiple ways to start a fire. Know how to start a fire just because you have some lighters doesn't mean you'll be able to start a fire. Uh, but even in the middle of winter with snow all over everything or if it's raining, if you know kind of what you're doing, we're not going to go into a st fire starting lesson. I'm not even a pro, but I, I know a little bit. You'll be able to start a fire. So know, you know, have some knowledge about fire starting, but it is way easier to start a fire with a Bic than if you don't have one. So Good to have. Uh, also, another thing that's great for signaling if you're if you're lost. Uh, signal fires have been around forever, so easy to find you with smoke clouds. You throw wet stuff on a fire; it makes more smoke during the day. Smoke is very easy for uh, search and rescue teams to find. At night, a fire is easy to find. So that I'll just put. I'm putting th both of those things in the bottom pouch here, and then duct tape. This is duct tape that's basically wrapped around a card. This is ready tape. I'm sure I got this in like a subscription box or you know a, a battle box type thing before because I would never buy this because it's so easy to make. You just take a du duct tape and you wrap it around a business card as many times as you want. And the duct tape, when it's sticking to itself, will stick. And then when you peel it off, it still has virtually the same amount of stickiness as when you brought it off the roll because on the roll, all it is is sticking to itself anyway. Duct tape is good for a million uses, but specifically as it pertains to a get home bag or a hiking bag, if you're wearing shoes that you don't normally hike in or you're breaking in some shoes or just, you know, whatever, if they start rubbing you the wrong way, uh, it's a it's a pretty well known hack. Like it, you know, this isn't uh, probably news to you, but duct tape. You duct tape over where it's getting hot, and it'll vastly reduce the chance of you getting a blister. Now you gotta act fast. If you if you wait too long and you already develop a blister, duct tape will help a little bit, but you'll be having a bad day. Every step will be suck. So kind of 
I don't the rule of thumb probably, I don't know, I've never really heard it as a rule of thumb, but as soon as you start feeling like a spot that doesn't feel right, as soon as it gets starts getting hot, don't power through it. You can't just power, I mean, you can power through it, but but why if you have duct tape? So if you feel a hot spot forming, take your boot off, take your sock off, make sure it's really dry, as dry as you can get that area, and then slap a piece of duct tape over it, and that will really protect your heel from getting a blister. So in you know, other than the million uses of duct tape, that is a very specific use as it pertains to hiking or getting home. And takes up virtually no space. You can also take a roll of duct tape, wrap it around a Bic lighter, same effect. That way you don't have a big roll of duct tape. I do like these uh, one inch Gorilla tapes as well. Like I have these all over the place. But as it pertains to a hiking get home bag, the thickness, the 1.88 inches or however thick the duct tape is, is a little bit better than the thin one inch rolls. And this is a little bit more compact. So I would, I would opt for some duct tape. However you wanna carry it, add some duct tape there. Compass, naturally, you know, if you have a paper map of your location, even better. But generally speaking, you know, you might have a Garmin watch or even an Apple watch or something that, you know, can do some tracking, but it's always good to have a backup. But the, the compass won't do you much good unless you know which way you're trying to go, honestly. Does, this one does have a signal mirror as well, so another kind of a dual use device. Actually has a little magnifying glass. I doubt that's enough to really start it. Uh, maybe, maybe you might be able to start a fire with a magnifying, so maybe a tri-use device here. But Generally, when you're going somewhere ahead of time, if you if you know where you're gonna be hiking and stuff, just get a general lay of the land, just kind of like look at the topography, look at where the parking lot is in relation to where you're hiking, so that way you at least have an idea with your compass saying, well, I know the parking lot is like south, so at least, you know, or the freeway is east, so I know if we go east far enough, we'll eventually hit the freeway. So a compass is good for that. Granted, you can use stars, you can use sun, you can use the moss on the side of a tree to have a rudimentary kind of gauge, but it's much easier with a compass and they're relatively lightweight, so might as well add it. Extra light. So I, I, I EDC a flashlight every day and I EDC a multi-tool. Recently it's been the Leatherman Arc I like this tool a lot. Is it better than the scale tool? I don't know, but I have been using the scissors a fair bit in the day to day. So if this tool didn't have the scissors, I'd probably still opt for the scale tool, but I'm giving it a good shake. I do like the blade. I do like that it's one hand, like, you know, you can flip it, flip it open. You can get the pliers one handed really easy. But I always, so just, just to say, if I'm hiking, if I'm getting home, I will always have a flashlight and I will always have a multi-tool on me. I'll also always have a firearm. Uh, we're not really talking about what, well, I guess we'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit. I, I EDC, I everyday carry a firearm uh, for self-defense, not because paranoia, just because I'm not an idiot and a gun is the best, uh, best way to stop evil especially evil with a gun. So I, I don't carry a gun in my get home bag or my hiking bag. I carry one on body. I make and I, I run a small holster company, LLOD.us, and I make and sell holsters, concealed carry, appendix carry holsters. So that's, I carry a gun every day, but it's not in here. But flashlight I carry every day, but in addition to the flashlight, you know, I could throw another flashlight in here. It certainly wouldn't hurt, but definitely a headlamp. This is a Petzl Zipka. Uh, you can get a battery pack for it or it can run on AAAs. So I have AAAs in it and then I have a backup set of AAAs. I talked about this in a previous video. I'm kind of historically, I've really liked, uh, you know, rechargeable headlamps, like the bio headlamps, bio light headlamps, I like a lot. But for something like this and actually kind of headlight headlamps in general, like backup headlamps that I just tuck away and don't think about and I just want them to work when I get to them. I'm kind of transitioning. Now the Petzl Zipka is not anything new. Like I've liked this headlamp for over a decade. But for, for lights like that, where you know I may find myself out in the wilderness for a day, two days, three days, four days, it's nice to have a little bit of extra battery life. So I use the lithiums here. They have a little more, uh, they're lighter weight and they have a little longer runtime typically and they usually work better in more extreme temperatures as well. So ultra compact headlamp, extra set of batteries for it. 
those are all gonna fit in that bottom pocket as well. So I think that's about all I'm gonna put in here. So I basically have most of these pouches relatively full. Again, all of them could fit a little bit more. I may put some of this stuff in here, I don't know. And then we got some of the bottom filled up. But this pouch still has lots of room. Let's see, uh, one Nalgene, two Nalgenes. People recommended I try this Awala water bottle. Mm, I don't know, I don't think it'll dethrone my Nalgenes uh, for reasons that I could get into in another video. Anyway, these, those fit in, I could fit three more in there. So this bag, again, I put a lot of stuff into that main pouch, but there's still room for plenty, plenty more in there. That's why, again, I opted for the, the little larger bag versus the, the smaller one. So we got a few other items here. Eh, maybe I'll put one of these. So just to guys, I, I wanted to talk to you real quick on price. Obviously not everyone can go out and just afford to kit out an entire get home bag from scratch. I, I haven't calculated how much of this is, but maybe a thousand, probably under a thousand dollars, but like several hundred dollars putting this whole thing together. So you don't need to start here. I always, I love nice gear. I, I, my channel has always been about premium gear. I'm not gonna apologize for that, but don't feel like you need to. If you have an old Jansport, if your kid wore out their old backpack and you got them a new one for seventh grade, take their old backpack and just use that as a base starter foundation. You get backpacks for free all the time, whatever. Backpacks are cheap. We're modeling it in this backpack, great backpack, great option. If you have the funds for it, again, you could build the exact same pack, but you don't, don't feel like you need this. So again, you can get cheaper alternatives to a lot of the stuff I put in here. You don't necessarily need any everything or you can start kind of building building it up. So at least you could have a backpack with a few items in there and then next paycheck you maybe buy a couple more items. But I only say that because I brought a budget option knife and a slightly more expensive option knife. This one is called a beaver craft. This is a fixed blade knife. Uh, kind of a little bush craft. This is like slightly worn cliff looking blade. I believe this knife was 35 bucks. Pretty nice knife, not a bad knife. I, I haven't used it that much. I've kind of dick, dicked around with it for a little bit, but it comes with a little sheath. You can put it on your belt. Fixed blade knife is good for the bushcraft. So if you're out in the wilderness doing some wilderness survival, or you're just, you know, bored and you want to whittle a stick while you're, while you're kind of taking a break, Fixed blade knives are great for that. So a cheap option, and then my favorite fixed blade knife still is the Lion Steel M4. This is an incredible fixed blade knife. 35 bucks, this one's like 150, 160, but my favorite fixed blade. I have several of these that they, I bought them full price, uh, and I really like them. I bought a lot of this stuff full price, actually. But anyway, cheap knife, more expensive knife, they'll essentially do the same thing. So if you don't have budget for, you know, this one has better steel, will hold an edge better, it's a little more ergonomic, you know, better quality materials, but this knife will essentially serve you just fine. But let's throw a fixed blade knife into the mix as well. That'll kind of fit right in between these little pouches here. And then I think I'm gonna put the rest of this stuff in, we got one little small pouch up here. I did put a little Tactigami kind of organizer with a multi, multi size um, kind of stretchy spandexy slots for putting stuff. So I always think a Sharpie is good. You could put like a notepad in here as well. I think my get home bag, I used to have a, a thing of waterproof post it notes. And I thought that would be really good. Like, you know, in the, the theory crafting in me, I was like, oh yeah, I might need to leave a note for someone I'm gonna go. And I leave them a note. I'm like, went to location X or what? And I was like, I'm not that tactical. I'm never gonna use these notes. So I took them out. But I still think a Sharpie's good. Write down, you know, a time of date that you saw someone or whatever, uh, or leave a note on something, you know, whatever. You, maybe you're a single dude and you wanna give someone your number, well, right? Sharpie. So that is, I always keep, I keep Sharpies everywhere. 
A uh, little pair of Sharma shears, they're relatively light. This is like a small, small version of them. So it takes up not much room, not much weight. And there are just things that scissors do better than a knife. Back a battery for your cell phone. Your cell phone could become a life-saving piece of equipment. Now you could carry any normal battery with a little USB cord and whatever. I keep it super stupid simple. This is a pretty small, uh, this one is from Urban Armor Gear. It actually has a little kickstand and stuff. If you want, maybe you use it to take a photo. You could kind of like use it and then use this to like prop, prop it up if you wanna like get the angle right or whatever. But it's a wireless MagSafe charger for if you have a MagSafe case or if you have an iPhone. Very slim, so if you need to top off your battery, great, great way to do it. Pepper spray. Pepper spray is good to have on you. When I'm out on a hike, when Ashley's out on a hike, there's actually a nice little spot right here on the pack you can lash it to. And again, I love knives, gun, carry a gun, but not everyone, I say it a lot, not everyone needs a bullet. Uh, and a pepper spray is a great deterrent, especially you know, if Ashley is out on a hike with a friend and she just has this. If a guy sees this strapped onto her back, you know, a potential attacker, he'll be like, mm, I'll go for a softer target. So just having this out displayed, I think is great. Obviously, this isn't a big can of bear spray, but it will be better against a bear than nothing or a, a dog or any wildlife or just anything. Pepper spray is always good to have. So we'll we'll put it in the bag. That'll be its like normal, normal spot that we have it. And then I have a Leatherman signal here. So I think the Leatherman signal is one of the best multi-tools for kind of like an outdoor survival type it's got a knife, it's got a wood saw, it's got pliers obviously, it's got a screwdriver, it's not as, as important, but it has a little, little striking surface to where you can use it to start a fire, and it has a little knife sharpener on there. Uh, but really it's the, oop, I just opened this stupidly, didn't, I didn't cut myself, but it's the saw that really helps for a wilderness survival. will help you build a shelter, it will help with the bushcraft again, uh, a saw, does well and I don't have like a hatchet in here or a silky saw or anything so this little saw actually is handy again I do carry an arc which does have a saw as well but maybe I'll switch back to the skeletal or maybe I'll you know just be carrying a regular knife that day so this is this is a pretty good tool again this is an expensive this is one of the most expensive parts of this whole kit so if you can't afford that then you know start off with a a cheap $10 multi-tool just to just to get it in there. So I think that's it. Oh, I got an air tag out here. Air tag, I love air tag. You buy buy a four pack of air tags, I throw them, I throw them in all kinds of gear that I want to be able to track down easy. So you could throw an air tag in there if you'd like. Uh, you know, in case somebody steals your bag, you're not supposed to track it down. But you could if you wanted to. And that that's basically it. I had some other stuff out here. It's not really worth talking about any of it. This Olight, I think I talked about it in a previous video, the Arkfeld. I kind of thought that this light might be good just as an extra light to keep in the bag because it has a pretty powerful green laser. Now, obviously you don't wanna use a laser. Don't shine lasers at aircraft. It goes without saying, but in a very, in a survival scenario, it could be a very good signaling tool. You're lost, you, you see someone, they're too far away to yell at them and you're exhausted and you, oh, it's too, I couldn't build a rainy fire and my batteries died on my, whatever. You shine a laser at them, they're gonna be able to see this. So this is kind of, I don't have it in my kit, but it, it would be a pretty good, a potentially good option to have because again, it's a thing that's dual purpose, has a flashlight, has a laser, also has a UV light, but there's no real, uh, no real survival implications for a UV light unless you yourself have nods and wanna see a little better for, for some reason. But white light is obviously visible to nods as well and lasers will, you'll knock someone's nods out. So. That maybe, and then, like I said earlier, even with this thing 
full, uh, easily carry double now jeans in the sides. Now, in my get home bags that I keep in my car, I will usually, I, I will keep a water bottle with water in it. Now, you gotta be careful because if, you're, if your car is in a climate that will freeze, then make sure you don't fill it all the way and depending on your water bottle, it may damage your water bottle, it may bust your water bottle, it may, it may break and leak. But usually if you leave a little bit of air for the water to expand, most water bottles will be able to handle that. Though I have had uh, like titanium water bottles like bulge at the bottom when they freeze. But kind of emergency water, that way you always have some water. And usually when I go on a hike, I'll get some fresh water. You know, I don't want my water that's been through a million freezing thaw cycles or however long it's been in the get home bag. So this is just like backup water. If you remember you're gonna go on a hike, you can swap it out for some clean water. But I will usually keep at least one bottle of kind of emergency water in there. Yeah, so I think that's it. Let me know down below if you have recommendations that I should add, if you have stuff that you think is stupid, if you, whatever anything that you would like to add, leave it down in the comments. People like to read. I keep thinking I cut myself, but I didn't. I didn't cut myself. Uh, leave them down below. Love to hear them. Uh, I, I learn all kinds of things from you guys in the comments, so I always appreciate that. So that's kind of the build out. And now I can take this and throw it in a car or in Ashley's car or you know transfer it from one car to another if I'm going on a road trip, throw it in there. It's just, it's just great to have. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I forget if I said it earlier or not, but it's good to test out the bag, uh, get the straps kind of ready to go. This works well for me because I take the same bag hiking. Uh, so I've kind of will be testing it on, you know, a, a sin similar scenario to uh, having to walk home or something like that. But it's good to do, make sure the bag fits right, make sure everything is adjusted, make sure it's gonna work for you, make sure the gear is sitting in there, how it works. So that way, if the time comes where you kind of are in some kind of a hurry, uh, you don't have to mess around too much scrambling and adjusting stuff and realizing, wow, this bag just is horrible. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll link as much stuff as I remember to down in the video description below. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I'll try to get you an answer. And then I always like hearing from you guys. So if you have, uh, you know, video suggestions, ideas that you would like to see me do in the future, I always love to hear them. All right, guys. Well, until next time, take care.